What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us for another Orbit. Good morning. Yes. Good morning, Blaze. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Kurt? I am also good. Uh, as uh, uh, has been mentioned in the chat by Robert Tables, uh, um, we are at the one year anniversary of a, two, a quick two week wow. lockdown. Yeah. So here we are, one year of Pandemi, Panini, Panorama, Pangea, Panache, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, we're at a year of it. Oof. A year. Yeah. Seven layer nachos go burr. I don't know what, oh my goodness. I got, oh, I got my lunch on my shirt. Okay. Took me a second. I was like, oh, well, that sounds good, first of all. And second of all, <laughs> yeah, I guess I do have my lunch on my shirt. This is actually... A tie dye job I did myself, so I'm not surprised some of it came out brown. But it's not bad. Wonderful. It's not bad. I like it. It's very, it's very Jackson Pollock. It is very Jackson Pollock, and that's what I went for. Like hmm. all over the place. No quick design, you know, just like going for it, or like no, like um, you know, standard design. I was like, I'm gonna, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, free for all this one. Yeah. What's up, Amon? What's up, Kyle? Thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, we love having you here on these Mondays where we talk about what's new in GraphQL. So I've already noticed one link has been dropped in chat. Thank you, Kyle. I've got that queued up. We'll go over that as well. If you have anything that you found uh, interesting over the last weeks or so in the GraphQL space, let us know, drop a link in the chat because that's what we're here to talk about. What's new in GraphQL this week, right? And so we love getting those links in the chat. Um, yeah, how was your weekend? Weekend was good. Uh... Yeah, played a bunch of Minecraft, uh, went skateboarding a little bit, um, and watched some pro Counter-Strike. There was a really, really big Counter-Strike tournament uh, oh, that was concluding over the weekend uh, in Poland, and um, and yeah, I, 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 like, I love me some pro Counter-Strike, so I had to tune in. It's so funny though those those games like they they start like the the finals yesterday started at 6 a.m. my time, uh, so I, I had to I had to like watch the replay. I, I start like I started it after I yeah. woke up, and I just watched the replay and stayed off of Twitter, stayed yeah. off of social media, like tried to block out everything so I don't get spoiled. But for sure, it all worked out. Yeah, that is that's so funny. That happens to me all the time with things like uh, WandaVision is another one. Like I can't go on social media on Fridays. Like I got to or mute, mm -hmm. you know, WandaVision so I don't get spoilers and stuff. Yeah, that's the worst. Or uh, it happens all the time, too, with like UFC fights and stuff like that. Mm hmm. That's yeah, a, that's a big one. People love to tweet out about it as it's happening. And it's like, no, I'm not yeah, going to get to man, watch this. Even... Yeah. Even like the official US UFC and, yeah. and ESPN accounts will uh, will post like yep. the highlights of the event as the event's going on. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah. they offer they offer no no breaks. No breaks. Uh, oh, so here's an interesting uh, fact tan tangentially related. Um, in the Major League Soccer mobile app, when we were building that, we had to accommodate no spoiler mode. You could go in your oh, settings cool. and turn off spoilers. And so then it would like not show you results or certain things for different matches and like having That's clever. The, yeah, yeah, it is clever. And uh, it was it was pretty tricky. A lot of tricky things went into like building that experience and making that well. It was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, yeah, somewhat related. I, I um. I saw that Twitter is going to be doing a hackathon soon. I forget. Someone tweeted it out and somebody asked for like a, a spoiler thing, like a reveal spoilers type uh, deal mm. as a feature, which would be cool to see. Yeah. Um, Reddit, Reddit, they don't have like an official spoiler um, feature, but, but people in certain subreddits like the MMA subreddit uh, use the uh, not safe for work tag as like a spoiler feature. So if, if you tag up a, a post that's not safe for work, it will it will hide the the thumbnail, it'll it'll like um, blank out text and stuff like that. So that they, they kind of like repurpose the not safe for work feature as a spoiler alert, which is pretty clever. Yeah, yeah, that is very clever. I like when folks get clever. Uh, that's <laughs> amazing. That's really cool. 
So yeah, so uh, Robert was just saying, loves a fun dose of Kurt on Friday nights, followed up by a Monday blast of GraphQL knowledge. And so Friday nights, I stream Dungeons and Dragons. And so it's like, it's funny how polar opposite like these two things are. Cause like on Friday nights, I'm talking about like fighting bandits and stealing boats and stuff <laughs> and like all kind of funny things. And then on Monday, it's all like serious, you know, like, oh, let's talk about GraphQL. You know, I guess I'm not really ever serious. I guess that's like one thing that is common across uh, both things. But it's pretty funny to go from like, you know, Dungeons and Dragons to GraphQL, like at the end and start of the <laughs> week. And they really line up well because it was better. I mean, I don't know. I think I would like to start my week with GraphQL, uh, Dungeons and Dragons as much as I would like to end it with, 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 uh, Dungeons and Dragons. If I had my way, what I'm saying is I would just play Dungeons and Dragons all the time. So if you <laughs> want to sponsor variety, me, though. yeah, it is good to have variety. But if anyone wants to sponsor us, Bad D and D, go check us out. Functions and Dragons. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. GraphQL is serious. I don't know that it is or it isn't. Uh, I don't know. How does the spec read? The spec reads pretty serious. So I'm gonna bucket yeah. it under serious. Yeah. I'd say GraphQL is, is serious business. Yeah. yeah Sometimes. It Sometimes. So it can be fun. Not not right now. Yeah, not right now. It's not. For the next hour, it's not serious. Um, that is for sure. But yeah, I had a good weekend. Good weekend as well. As I already mentioned, Friday night, played some Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, what did we do? We fought. We fought uh, some bandits that were trying to steal this amulet that lets you absorb somebody's memories from their whole life. So right now there's this big baddie who's trying to get, they have this mask that you, if you put it on, it will permanently like polymorph you into another person. And they're after this amulet that gives you someone's memories. And so our hypothesis is they're going to assassinate the king and have someone take the king's place, right? Put on the mask, absorb the memories and boom, nobody would know. Nobody would know the difference, right? Damn. Yeah, plot thickens. So that's what we feel like is <laughs> happening. Yeah, it's serious, right? You wouldn't right. think for yeah, for a made up storyline, but Conlin, our DM, let me tell you, they uh they really throw it together. It's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So that's that. Then I, ho this, I hope you guys get to the bottom of it. Yeah, five head play, exactly. Galaxy brain level um plots happening over there. We're gonna get to the bottom mm -hmm. of it, and we'll probably end up taking out a lot of bandits along the way in some funny and haphazard ways. Yeah. It's pretty great. And and where where can people find this again? That's a good point. So here I'll at all at us. So it's at functions and dragons, and you can find us right here on Twitch on Friday nights at about eight to eight thirty um, uh, Eastern Standard Time. Cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. We're pretty active. We try to be, be as there. act. Yeah, be there. We try to be as active with the chat as we can. Um, and yeah, but uh, yeah some great role playing a lot sometimes some kicking butt i like to refer to dungeons and dragons somebody said if you could replace the D, &D what would you replace it with like if it didn't stand for dungeons and dragons what would it stand for and i said dice and drama because that sums up D, &D very well lots of dice rolling and lots of drama so yeah, mm -hmm. i love it <laughs> wonderful yeah i i uh i i've tuned into to one D, &D stream uh, that that was and that was my first time ever ever That's like right. seeing D and D play, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was a, it was a good time. Yeah, it's a lot of pretty fun. uh pretty hilarious uh, happenings in yeah. there. And then the other thing that I'm working on is I worked on this weekend was touching up that blog post I was telling you about. I'm working on a good blog post on next js data fetching with apollo client like what are the different ways what's the best way to architect that and orchestrate it and work with apollo client and next js apps because i experienced this myself recently and i said "Ooh, this would be a good topic so yeah working on that and that's it wonderful yeah that was a pro well, move sorry go ahead <laughs> nice 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 job tables mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um well, with with that, I you know, we we we've covered what we've done this yeah, weekend. Chat. What's new in our lives? Uh, what's new in GraphQL? And and I, I, as we always mention, uh, chat. If there's something that uh, something I, I, that that you wanted to shine some light on in the world of GraphQL, um, please drop a link in the chat and 
we'll uh, we'll happily spotlight it here. We will. We will spotlight it. We will happily spotlight it. We love spotlighting it. And we've got one submission already from Kyle, so we're going to dive into that. But before we do, we're going to uh, cover some other things. So uh, let's see. What have we got here first? So I've been keeping these tabs open. Oh, this white screen of death. There we go. Uh, so Eve back again. Eve has been a, a busy bee this last month. So if you... Uh, missed it. Eve did this awesome tweet thread of like 28 days of GraphQL for February. Uh, you could just Google that and I'm sure it will come up. This is not that that thread, even though that probably would have made sense to include it here, being that it's like the, the March 1st, which means all 28 are out. But definitely go check it out. But also next week, if you're like relatively new to GraphQL, uh, going to be uh, uh, hosting a webinar. And I'm pretty sure it's free. Like you just go and sign up. And you can get a nice overview of GraphQL from Eve, who teaches it quite often and is a great teacher and funny. Hmm. So it's a nice way to dip your toes in, um, which actually tangentially, I'm going to switch to another one that's also about learning GraphQL. So I'm going to skip one and go to this because as a friendly reminder, if you're also, I mean, if you are new to GraphQL, you can also come check out Odyssey. So Odyssey is... Apollo's own LMS or learning management system, platform, whatever for <laughs> learning GraphQL. Uh, and I also just recommend like watching this video because it is super amazing and hilarious. And I'm just so excited to see like uh, our video kind of, um, uh, uh, I guess, production come to life at GraphQL. We have like filmmaker and professional editor on team now uh johnny shout out to johnny love having you on the team and so it's like we're just gonna be taking this stuff up a notch <laughs> we're like mm -hmm. emerald in here bam premiere pro on it bam take it up a notch so yeah that's what we're gonna <laughs> that's what we're gonna be doing so get ready folks and we're working really hard on having part two of liftoff series out soon so <clears throat> definitely want to check that out uh, and then, oh, also related, if you hop over to the Apollo blog, so um, I'll just drop the link to the blog directly in the chat. Um, there is a great blog post on how this platform that you're looking at in this video was created. Uh, slash blog, and it should be like one of the newest posts on there, how we built Odyssey. And look at me not blowing this stuff up. I am the worst. It is a Monday though. <laughs> so I, I get a little bit of slack for a case of the Mondays. Yeah. yeah, you get a pass. Yeah, right. You get a pass. Yeah, but definitely check that stuff out, folks. Very cool things happening. Um, and like I said, lift off part two and I think part tray, right? Part three also in the works, or is it two right now that's in the works? Do you know? Do part we have two is in the works. Part two yeah. is in the works and should be ready. I'm not putting dates, but like it's in the works. Coming along. Great time to go dive into yeah. part one and you'll be ready for part two, which is coming. Um, yeah, very cool. Very, very cool. So the next thing that is on our list, and so I'm kind of burning through these. we got a pretty short list today. Uh, it's not super long. So if you have anything in chat, drop it in. Otherwise, we'll just like chat with you and call it a day, right? Because like, you know, it is what it is, folks. Uh, another another uh, related ooh. link I, I threw at the bottom of our list there oh, is... I gotta go check that uh, out. Is that... Um, CSS Tricks, uh, one of my favorite web websites, just featured uh, Apollo Odyssey alongside some other really great free learning tools, uh, you know, r revolving around uh, tech. And I would highly recommend checking out this this blog post um, outside of the, the the fact that they featured uh, a product that I built. Um, a lot of these other tools in there, like. Webflow University and Netlify's Jamstack Explorers. Great one. I love that one. Uh, and, and a whole whole bunch of other um, great free learning resources, like first party learning platforms. Or very close um, to first party, like from very knowledgeable folks. Because I think Figma is the only one that might not be first yeah. party. Yeah. And hey, look, that's us. That's us. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Ooh, WordPress. Uh, Really, a, a good post, a, a good post to uh, to bookmark in your browser and uh, and head back to when you're when you've got some 
uh, some time that you want to kill learning some new tech. Definitely a, uh, a a worthwhile a worthwhile read. So uh, uh, tables asked Robert Tables in chat said, uh, has anyone made a snarky account highlighting doing GraphQL wrong with a crashing spaceship and called it appalled GraphQL? Or appalled QL instead of Apollo GraphQL. I don't believe that they have. I would go see if that domain name is available. I mean, it's like prime real estate. Um, but yeah, nobody has. It's real estate. Yeah, nobody has that I am aware of. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised because that's funny. <sighs> but yeah, yeah, this is a. Uh, I loved reading this. This was a great article. Um, and it just goes to show that, like, folks are starting to understand that there's a lot of value in creating the educational material yourself mm -hmm. um, because it's, you know, 100% organic, non-GMO, uh, straight from the source, you know, type content, which is very valuable to mm -hmm. the community as well as valuable to the company. It's, you know, you're making sure that people understand GraphQL from Apollo's point of view, right? And like how to work with GraphQL successfully with Apollo. Uh, and it's really cool. Mm -hmm. And not to say that like community content is not good, right? There's a ton of really good stuff, but that's a much more oftentimes piecemeal solution or that content might be walled, which is totally fine. Again, content creators like make you money. You deserve to. Uh, but this is a resource that we want to have for the community at large for free. And it's the best way to do it, you know? You bet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So let's see. Moving on. Moving on. We have Hazura. So Hasura? Hazura? Hasura? Hasura? <laughs> What's the verdict? I feel like the question always this. I feel like this question always comes up whenever, whenever, whenever I say the word. word. Like, yeah. Hmm. I'm going to say Hazura because I believe that's correct. Okay. Hazura uh, is 2.0, yo. They've reached a 2.0. Uh, so, hey, what's up, Go David? Happy Monday. Congrats. How are you? Thank you for joining us. Yeah, and congrats, congrats Hazura. 2.0 is big. It's big things. Uh, so, pretty interesting stuff. Go check it out. Haven't really dove in too deep to see all of what 2.0 entails, but I did see somewhere reference that they also open sourced a couple things. I'm going to do my research on what those things are. We'll probably have that for you next week. So stay tuned. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's definitely something that I want to look at, um, and check out and see what exactly it is that they are offering. Which we're coming up here on the half hour and is bringing me to my last item on the list. So if anyone else has any items, now would be the time to drop them in the chat. Oh no, did you freeze? Yo, that is perfect. Somebody clip this and screenshot it because Blade for Rose. OMG, that is an amazing freeze. But let me see if I can get him back. So give me one second and I'm going to be right back.
All right, we got him back. We got we got him back. <laughs> welcome back. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Oh, nice. And uh, I, we got the freeze caught um, so that we can meme it <laughs> later. So have no fears. Oh, great. <laughs> Yeah, so Skype has been giving me no end of problems lately, um, unfortunately. It just, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's an update that released, but over the last few weeks, I've not had a stream go smoothly um, when Skype has been involved and my streams work perfectly when I'm not on Skype. I And I've done some uh, monitoring of the activity monitor and it's like ridiculous. At some point, Skype renderer will shoot up to like 500% CPU usage. Um, and I don't know why. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. And I don't know why. So I'm looking at other solutions. Apologize. Thank you all for sticking with us. What a pain in the butt. But that was a great freeze. You had your tongue out. It was hilarious. I it know. It was amazing. <laughs> post, post smoothie. Yeah, stuff. it was so good. Real. Yeah, so we've got that caught. Um, yeah, right. Microsoft. Yeah. Well, I know they don't really like. It's like interesting because it works well for us for a very long time. Skype supports what's called like an NDI um, server, and so this server uh, allows it like runs on your computer, like on local host, and feeds the video and audio through that, and you can use these NDI sources within OBS, that's the software that I use to organize the layout, bring in all the audio video and stream it out to Twitch. Something has happened mm -hmm. in the recent week, weeks with Skype and it has affected that NDI um, uh, support. So I gotta figure out what it is. I'm also looking at, ooh, um, uh, rubber tables. If you can think about it, if you could also DM me that blog post, if you have, I apologize. I can't remember, I haven't checked. But if not, DM me that blog post you have on using a streaming PC and a Mac together because that is where I think I'm headed. Uh, and we're going to do that. Yeah, oh, so OBS Ninja. Yeah, I got to check that out. Um, this could possibly be the solution. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's a couple things I'm going to I'm gonna investigate. But this is not working. I've looked at something called Lightstream. We, we could use like StreamYard, but then we lose a lot of the fun stuff that we get here, right? Like I can't use browser sources, so there'd be no chat. There'd be no, uh, I'd have to like fall back to default follows and no more memes. All of that stuff would go away. We can't have that. Exactly. Sad. Sad, right? No. Exactly. So I am. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I, I just, uh, I was searching around around the web for this while, while, uh, while Skype, our Skype call was, uh, was offline and, and I, I came across OBS Ninja as well. Yeah. Uh, and it seems, seemed interesting. Yeah. Um, might, might be worth a try. Yeah, so I'm going to, we can, we can take it, take it for a trial. Exactly. Run. So I'm going to check it out. We're going to see how OBS Ninja goes. Uh, and maybe we'll do that for Thursday stream. We'll see. Um, but yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We'll see if I can get it set up in time. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right, Kyle. That, that's the yeah. It's it's too valuable to give away at this point. Seriously, I would never, never. Uh, I need my memes. They are life, right? Like, look at that. <laughs> no memes. Like, yeah, unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. Uh, when one meme door closes, another always opens, though. <laughs> Perhaps. I mean, there are some ways that I could do it. So I could actually do my video display. So like I could have memes pop up in my individual video because I could use like OBS sure. to uh, uh, like do overlays and stuff. But that would still not be quite the same effect, you know? Yeah. Mm. Hand draw memes. Yes. Yeah, like get a whiteboard. It's like Pictionary, I'm just like over here drawing a memes as as we're well. <laughs> uh, Yeah, you gotta you gotta personally respond to these uh, <laughs> to these requests. We we could build we could build a system though. Like we could we could make like a a queue. Yeah. Uh, on your monitor shows up. You know you have yeah. to. It's like a, like a working working in the kitchen of a restaurant. You know. <laughs> I don't dislike Order. that. Yeah, I don't dislike One that. Meme. Ding Want ding. A cat. We need this caption. <laughs> I need two cats and a hacker meme. <laughs> All going out same time. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, I love it. That is amazing. We need to hire hire some more meme cooks. Yeah, for sure. 
Oh my goodness. All right. Uh, but moving on, moving on, folks. So what else do we got? Stock X blog? We got two more things. One more before and then Stock X blog is next. Um, we've got uh, a three-part blog series uh, by uh, Saswada. Uh, and it's focused on building a chat app with GraphQL subscriptions and TypeScript using Apollo and type GraphQL. So type GraphQL is something that I am not super familiar with. So I just went and perused them and took a look. It's a pretty interesting article, definitely worth checking out. Uh, you know, whether you're just curious about like what that might look like um, and what type GraphQL is, but it's really nice for working with TypeScript and, and GraphQL. Definitely something worth checking out. Uh, going to have PRs for stream memes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You have to get merged before I'll work on it, before I'll draw it. Ugh. <laughs> but yeah, but this actually does bring us to our last item, which Kyle dropped in chat. Thank you, Kyle. Stock X is spinning up their own blog. I love to see it. So they've already got two articles on here. Uh, why use GraphQL and uh, nine lessons from a year of Apollo Federation. So uh, both of these articles are excellent. Uh, I really enjoy reading Kyle's uh, content. A uh, great writer, technical writer. And it's light and fun. And it's de oh, thank you. I forgot to drop the links. I got all discombobulated. Um, definitely nice. worth checking out. Uh, I love these articles. I just love this image too here with the question mark. So it's like really neat. I I've done light painting before. And it's like relatively difficult. This is really neat um, for them to pull off here. So mm -hmm. light painting is when you take a camera and set it to really long exposures, which is something that you often do at night and, and uh, anyway to let the camera absorb enough light to show a clear picture. However, you can mess with it because it's such a long exposure. If you move quick enough and use bright lights, you can paint things yourself, right? So like I could take a flashlight, mm -hmm. glow sticks, any of this, and I'll dig up and share on Twitter later. I have some uh, light painting art that I've created. Uh, yeah, cool. so I will definitely dig that up and share it on Twitter. But yeah, light painting is fun. It's not something that I get a lot of time to focus into, but I really do enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. It's really cool. And that's how this effect is accomplished is with light painting. Got you. Yeah, learn something. Thanks for explaining. Yeah, learn something new every yeah, day. Yeah, it seems like a, it seems like a pretty time, a pretty time consuming uh, thing. Like you, you don't, you don't know what the results is going to look like until you're done. That's right painting it and then you have to go check it out on your camera exactly exactly uh, and and probably probably try again I, I would yeah assume. yeah most times you end up trying a few times depending on what it is you're trying to do um and uh yeah so this came from unsplash great great website for uh non-copyrighted um content and then uh explained by the guy wearing the one-off custom tie-dye shirt <laughs> Yes, exactly. I like to do things that are arty sometimes, uh, like make gnome villages as well. Um, but anyway, yeah. So yeah, that is actually the conclusion. That, that wraps up what we've got for this week, unless somebody else has anything else for us. We're here, we're waiting. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. So that, that math does check out. Oh, oh, well, we'll see how it goes. Stop. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I saw. So Kyle uh, tweeted out earlier today that they're moving more, directing more traffic to their GraphQL APIs. And it looks like over the next few days, the iOS app's product page will be on GraphQL. So that's awesome. Love. Exciting that stuff. really is. That's exciting. Congrats. That's like a big step. Like, you know, we might think of like, I don't know. We'll see, I, that makes a lot of assumptions, but there's a lot of work that goes into migrating like backend infrastructure, moving to GraphQL, away from REST, a lot of questions about traffic. And I imagine StockX gets a ton of their traffic from mobile, right? Like I would imagine that the mobile app is bumping. Yeah, there we go. 30% of their overall traffic, right? That's a lot. That's a big change. So congrats to y'all at StockX for getting there and making that push. Uh, I hope it goes very well for y'all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we got a quick question. I don't know if you saw that. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and run through this. So the question is, I have a GraphQL topic I'm curious about. How is data access throttling handled? Like, could someone write a query that really thrashes your DB for instance? And then is there any articles in architecture about this is my main question. So actually funny enough, Kyle wrote a great article about uh, caching GraphQL APIs and especially federated ones that I would check out. But like, just like with REST APIs, there are certain hangups that you can experience in GraphQL APIs that would require you to do some work to make sure your database doesn't get thrashed. So to answer your question, yes. If you have a resolver and in that resolver, it's taking some params and then querying to your database, and there is no caching anywhere between the client's request and that database uh, request going through, absolutely. And this gets compounded when, uh, if this is like maybe a lookup that's part of a list, so you're fetching a list of X thing, and then each item in there is making this query, and then like it can get really nasty, absolutely. However, it's kind of the same mm -hmm. situation in REST, right? Like if I, query for a list of items and then from the client refetch, like need to fetch all of those individual items from the, the API, but there's no caching between any of those steps, the database is gonna get thrashed. So you can have caching at your database layer, right? Like right before the database, you can have caching at the resolver layer. You can have some sort of edge caching as well, but yes, without having a caching strategy in place, if you start to experience a lot of traffic, your database will get thrashed. What those caching strategies are going to need to be varies drastically between the technology all throughout that pipeline. Some common GraphQL examples that you'll see to minimize that is number one, using something like Data Loader. Uh, data Loader will uh, help cache the um, repetitive requests so that once it fulfills for one, it will resolve for all of the ones who were caught within that kind of uh, time frame of requests coming in. Uh, you also have, yep, there you go. You also have uh, just like building internal caches yourself. Like it's not uncommon to do in REST APIs. So maybe you're using something like Redis or Memcache and you're caching the results that are coming back for a specific API request. You can do that. You can also get caching at the edge layer, although it is more complicated and tricky to set up than it is for REST APIs, which you kind of get out of the gate just because uh, most requests tend to be get requests and most caching services like Nginx, Varnish, uh, et cetera, are set up specifically to handle that. But fun fact, you can both in Nginx and in a Varnish, uh, write your own caching logic and uh, deal with um, uh, even caching those post requests. If it's only a query in there and there's no mutation or subscription embedded within that request, boom, cache that. And you can do that um, right at the edge with either Varnish or Nginx, but it does take a little bit more effort than the out of the box solution you would get with REST APIs. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it, like HTTP requests are, are cached by the browser. So you like, um, th th I mean, that that's the big, the big advantage yeah. you get from REST. And like when, when it comes to like the, the phenomena that you described is, is commonly referred to as N plus one, yeah. where you have in GraphQL, it's not uncommon to say like fetch a, fetch a, an array of posts, but then for each post, you run resolvers fetching author data, specific data comments. on on those posts, yeah. right? So if you if you have a have a uh, you know a, a, an array of a hundred posts, and then each post makes a query for its comments. Um, that's that's a hundred comments queries uh, plus your your original posts query, and um, and and yeah, like if if you you could run into that same problem with Re with a REST API. But what's more likely is if, if you if you have a REST API that you know is going to re reply with posts and all the comments for each post, you would write your database query in such a way that it's only one query that that joins comments and posts. Yes. Um, and and we we don't really have the luxury of doing that in in GraphQL 
following this like uh, model where each type has its own resolvers. So that that's that's where the da the data loaders um, come in. Uh, I, I I mentioned this one that that I use uh, data loader SQLize. Uh, I I use SQLize as an ORM for my Postgres database, and what it does is when it, when I make that posts and um, there's uh, all throughout that GraphQL request, this data, this SQLized data loader is keeping track of what queries I'm I'm uh, asking to run by way of the, this API calls that I make, and then gathers all those queries up and and tries to distill them into as few queries as possible. So rather than making a hundred for uh, all the comments of a hundred posts, makes a query for makes one query for all the comments that you know are related to the hundred specified post IDs and then um, and then and then pieces that data together before it gets sent back out to my client. Um, so yeah, the real, the, that, that, that's kind of the, the, that the simplest kind of first level of, of, um, of deduplicating queries or, or reducing the number of, of individual database queries that can, that can, uh, in turn, uh, reduce the load on your database. Yeah. And it really just like boils down to trade-offs and what is more valuable to you. Is it more valuable to be able to write that one individual query uh, and access all of it, but then in turn have to deliver all of that data down to the client? Uh, or is it more valuable to have to have uh, more complex caching strategies in place and be able to deliver just the exact data that you need down to the client? And so like, as with anything, it's, it's all about the trade-offs. Um, but honestly, in my opinion, whether it's REST or GraphQL, ideally you have caching mechanisms at both like the end point and deeper into uh, your application towards database access anyway. Um, you know, because when you hit scale, if you're not prepared, if you don't have caching in place and you start getting more requests than you expect, that's when things tend to go bad. Um, so, you know, I recommend, uh, uh, thoroughly caching data and having good caching strategies in place, no matter what kind of API that you are building. Yeah. yeah. Well said. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, What's yes. Going on, love it. Ibaldi coming in with the updated. That one looks so cool, dude. Use the, the mm -hmm. points, channel points to update the um, emote. <laughs> A little sunglass astronaut. Mm -hmm. Super dope. Uh, yeah, love you too. Thank you for asking. We love when we get these questions because this is what we're here for. Um, as much as it is to talk about what's new in GraphQL this week, we love sharing our thoughts on Graph. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. It's just smooshed. That's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, sharing our thoughts on GraphQL and uh, discussing pros and cons of the solution, why we like it, what you can face when using it, and generally how it lines up uh, compared to what you would do equivalently in REST. All fun topics for me anyway. I know I love chat about this stuff. 